All right, guys, I'm back in the shop. We are uh, officially prepping. This is Kelly's car. We're prepping it for uh, Drift Appalachia, Appalachia Drift, whatever it's called. Really excited about that. This thing needs a little bit of work. Um, I did some wiring stuff up under the dash. Uh, I wasn't gonna show all that, but I uh, just cleaned up some stuff and changed a couple of fuses, relay switches um, to back how I had it originally. When this car got passed around through different hands, at some point people were cutting wires, adding relay relays and different stuff and kind of just bypassing the way that I had it. So I just went back to how it was. I had to change a few wires, add a, add a couple things, change some relays that had burned up. And uh, that's really all it needed. But for some reason, people like to complicate and go a roundabout way of doing things. And uh, I just undid it, redid it the way it should be. And, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. So I hope Kelly's happy too. He hasn't had time to work on this. So I was like, you know what, Kelly, I know you're busy. I want to fix it for letting me use it. So I hope he's appreciative. He gets mad. He's like, I can do this stuff myself. And I'm like, yeah, I know you can do it, Kelly, but we're all busy. I can dedicate time to it. So let me do it. Let me do it. So you're welcome, Kelly. But thank you also. So um, what we're doing, we took this out to the track to test it. And we had some issues with the fuel system. Kelly told me that he had, that the tank in this was rusty and he had cleaned it out once. Then we put ethanol in it over the weekend. And I think the ethanol ate all the extra rust and then immediately clogged up the filters again. So we went out to the track and he's like, there's no way it's plugged up again. I already did this. And so we opened the tank and sure enough, it was full of rust. And so it had to have been the fact that we put uh, E85 in it instead of gasoline. It must've eaten all that crap. And so the tank is full of junk. We got the tank out. Um, what did we decide to do? Let me show you. Uh, since this car is down, the engine uh, failed in this car and I'm kind of frustrated. I really want to do a full refresh on this car. So what we did is we took the fuel cell out of this to take and put in that. Now, why would I steal the fuel cell from this? Well, for one, you can see the quick change is not a quick change because the fuel cell is mounted right in the way. So we need to move the fuel cell. And I decided I want to use a different fuel cell. Also, my radiators are right here. I want to move the radiators, do kind of a redesign on the whole back of this car. I have the 2F panel, so I'm going to cut it off, fit all that stuff up, and do just kind of a whole refresh on this. But that's not the point of this video. I just want to show you why we are using the fuel cell from that car. So the goal tonight is to take this and put it in there. So we took the tank out. And now what we have to do is cut out the bottom of this car, take some measurements, get that recessed and fit in here, and then make some brackets to hold it up in there. And then from there, it should be pretty simple to, uh, to make the pumps work. Pump out of there, go to a surge tank probably, and then do a pump from there to the front, and then it should work. Should work. And this is a plastic tank inside the metal bladder. Metal or plastic bladder inside the metal tank, so that should uh, never have any issues with corrosion inside of there. So let's get started on this. Um, there's quite a bit to do, but for now, I want to get the fuel system set up, and then I want to put it on the rollers tomorrow and get this thing tuned up. Okay, so it's time to take some measurements for the fuel cell. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. So obviously, we're going to measure the underside because um, there's a lip underneath, and so we're going to hang it from some square tubing. So we want to measure from under the under overhang to under which is 18 and a quarter, maybe 18 and a half, a little bit of slop. We're getting a little bit rough measurements here. So there to there. So it is a square. So we want to be 18, just under 18 and a half, both, uh, both ways there. So I already cut some square tubing and I know we're pretty close. But let's check this. Obviously, we don't, we don't want the fuel cell touching the taillights. We want it a little bit in for some crash protection. And if we measure inside to inside, we are 17 and a half, a little under. So we're an inch off. And you can see we're already touching the battery. So that means the battery has to move. I think we'll take the battery and put it right here. Because the fuel cell, I want it to come to about there. So we got room for the battery right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the battery right now. We can cut that angle iron off and then move that and then probably even move the fuel cell a little bit further forward as long as it doesn't interfere with the diff, which it shouldn't because the recess for the spare tire uh, comes all the way up there. It doesn't hit the diff. So yeah, we should, we should, we got room all the way, probably up to there. I don't want to go all the way. So we got room to get a wrench in there if we need to service the diff, but we can go at least another three inches forward. So I got the frame kind of built out and I cut the middle out. Um, 
That's some super straight cutting right there. Precision, super, look at that. Oh yeah, precision cutting. But that opens up the, uh, the space that I need for now. Kelly can finish this later however he wants to tube it or whatever. This is just uh, to get it ready for this event. And I'm giving him my fuel cell. So I'm making it fit. If Kelly was here tonight, he could do a better job. But since I'm doing it, this is what I'm doing. Once it's welded to the frame properly, it should be plenty strong. And then we can work on plumbing. I measured underneath. I wanted to keep it away from the exhaust. So I staggered it a little bit off center. If you see, it's off center to the right. And that is to avoid the exhaust there. So it's not just sitting there melting the, the fuel cell. And then we'll have to remount this. This was mounted down there. Actually, it should still fit. Oh, look at that. It should still fit right there in that hole. And then I can just do a little tab up to there. Nice. Well, that's cool. All right, I'm going to test fit it and then I'm going to call it a night. We'll get back to it tomorrow morning. I was going to go 18 and a half and it looks like I probably should have. Um, it's a little bit expanded at the bottom. I don't know if that's the original measurements at the top or whatever, but unfortunately, uh, I need more, more slop. So I'm going to have to cut it apart and make it a little bit bigger. That really sucks. I should have just gone. I even need more than 18 and a half. I'll just break those welds. Hopefully I can still use these pipes and just stagger that forward a little bit. All right, until tomorrow. All right, welcome back. We're back at it today and we're able to make some progress here. We got the tank in, got all the, uh, the stuff cut and rewelded and everything fits. So now it's time to start uh, figuring out some fittings. So I have a dash eight here and a dash eight there, but I'm running through a pump. So I'm thinking about running two pumps instead of a surge tank. So I need to do a dash eight to a Y to two pumps, Y and back together, and then go into that dash eight line. So I'm going to run to the fitting store and do all that. We have our return as a dash six that goes to a dash eight. So I just need a six to eight adapter. And then we should be able to, uh, at that point, should be able to start it up. Um, this is just a, a, a vent rollover valve. It's got a one-way valve in there. So I just need to do a little curly cue and then zip tie it up here. And then once I run all the wiring, finish putting the battery in, then we should be good to go. Off to the hardware store. All right, let's go have a look at this thing. Made some progress. I went to the fitting store and uh, got a bunch of fittings. Flip this camera around. Okay, so they only had a half inch line in this clear hose. He said it's, it's fuel safe, which is cool because it allows you to see bubbles, allows you to see any sort of fuel flow issues. They didn't have a Y, so I did a T. Um, we haven't, we have more than enough fuel with these two pumps. So I'm not as worried about the flow. Obviously this is less than ideal, right? You have, you have fuel going burp, 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 and then having to make the bend and go out that way. Not ideal for flow, but it should be, it should work. If not, I guess I'm going to find some Y's tomorrow, but, um, these, uh, these pumps, I actually got these on Amazon and, uh, I was only going to use one to feed the surge tank, decided not to use the surge tank. So I'm feeding two. To hopefully handle the power we'll know on the dyno tomorrow uh if that's enough pump uh normally i uh i buy better pumps i don't like cheaping out on fuel pumps but i wanted to give this a shot and see how well they work uh we're gonna bring a spare one with us and we're logging fuel pressure even on the dash so that's something that we can always be monitoring if in case there's an issue uh the reason I uh, went with these pumps on Amazon is because they were available the next day and I was in a hurry. Um, so those are installed. We can always change them out in the future if we need to, but they were 36 bucks a piece. So totally worth a shot. Hopefully I don't have to pull this clip up and, and, uh, and use this in a regret video when something bad happens. I think it'll be fine though. So got all that done. We got this plumb together um, and that feeds the dash eight line that goes to the front. So we should have plenty of fuel flow for what we need. We need to go get some ethanol and top this off, but at least we can get it going on the dyno for now and, uh, and be ready for tomorrow. We also had to do some work on the turbo. Working on getting those headlights installed. It's going to look a lot better with some bricks on it. Um, got a coupler to run a filter. Kelly didn't have a, <clears throat> Kelly didn't have a filter set up yet. And then the oil drain was leaking. Uh, it was the older style GTX flange, and this is a regular style wide, wide flange for the turbo drain. So we just had to kind of redesign the turbo flange with what we could use, or at least what I had available. And so we got that working, so that shouldn't be a leak anymore. And then still need to do hood pins. 
figure all that out. So not a whole lot to do, but once I hear it run and hear the, uh, you know, see it hit boost and AFRs are good and all that stuff, then I'll be confident in all that. We can do a proper tune and uh, see what see what kind of power this makes. I'm guessing right now, I'm going to guess this is going to do, nope, I'm going to ask Jesse what his guess is before before I make a guess. Because if I guess, he's going to price his right me and I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not having that. I've, I've never been in their car before. So I'm just going to, this is a wild, I'm just going to say five. 500? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, you said 500? I'm, I'm going to price his right you. I was going to say high fours. I was going to say 450 to 480. So I'll, I'll stick with 450. I'm going to shoot low. So we'll see. We'll get a proper tune. I want to get a baseline where it's at now and then start adding timing and fuel and, or not fuel, but we'll get the fueling set up and then we'll start messing with timing and see how it goes. But for now, it's time to, uh, to go to sleep. I didn't film a bunch of it, but it was quite a bit of work today to get that thing going, the fuel system and all that, running back and forth to the fitting store um, and trying to juggle other stuff. So I'm excited to get on the dyno tomorrow. Let's go. All right, guys, we're back at it again. Sam showed up to help me. So here's what we ran into. Uh, right before Sam got here, I, was, I had the car on the dyno. I was looking at it, and we found out that the fuel system was still having issues, even though notifications, mm -hmm. even though uh, we had put the new tank and the pumps and all that stuff, it still didn't sound super great. So like, you know what? I want to pull the injectors out. I want to look at the filter. Let me show you what I found in the filter. So I haven't showed this to Sam, but I told him I'd, I'd show him what I found because it's kind of wild. So this is just a regular canister filter. I definitely put this on there, but it has a mesh filter, right? Which is not great. It's a hundred micron. And I know it doesn't trap a ton of stuff, but the way these filters work, uh, you hold this. Yeah. The way these filters work is it clips onto this side, right? Clips onto that side. Obviously it can't go on this side. These are machined differently. So when that clips on, there's a little O-ring in there. The fuel flows in, around, and then out that side, okay? Now, there's supposed to be a little spring. I remember there's a spring in there that holds this from coming loose. When I pulled this filter off and carried it over here, I could hear it going katink, katink, katink inside of there. So what does that tell you? It's All right. gone now. Yeah. So that tells me that if it's free floating inside of there, right, it can just float around. Whether, whether this was put in the right way or the wrong way doesn't really matter because if this is free floating and it goes like that, you're blocking all your fuel flow. If it's on this side free floating and it goes like that, you're blocking all your fuel flow. So with, this thing was basically floating around in there blocking flow, whether it's put in the wrong way or the right way, that spring has to hold this to leave room for the fuel to flow in or out, whichever way that you put it in there. So I think what was happening was depending on how much flow, if you hit a right bump or whatever, it would get sucked in there and pinch off the fuel flow. So not only was this not doing a good job filtering because uh, I think rust and sediment from the tank just flows right through there. I mean, you can see all the dust in there, but it was also, uh, blocking the fuel flow so this might have been the biggest problem i mean obviously there's junk in the tank sam told me you guys worked on it a while ago huh and that tank <laughs> yeah, was ja jacked yeah, up beyond and so flip this back so him and kelly worked on it and kelly told me he's like hey we took the pump out we cleaned the tank and all that stuff but i think what happens we put ethanol in it again it like gave a whole second wash to that tank and grabbed all the junk and put it right into that filter so sam helped me pull the injectors out we cleaned them on the on the machine, backflowed them. There's a bunch of like brown just when they were getting stuck open. Oh yeah, the two of them yeah. two of them got stuck open reverse. So they're like flowing stuff right through them in reverse. So Sam had a good idea that while the plugs were out, we could do a compression test. So uh, we did the first two. I didn't film it, but I was actually pretty impressed with how high these numbers are. Of course, this one's not not, not nearly as high. That one's 150. One and two were both uh, 175 to 180. So this engine seems pretty healthy, except for number three so far. But this is, uh, this is a 1.5J. It has 1J pistons with a 2J block. So the 1J pistons are supposed to add high compression over 2J pistons. And then this cylinder head design is really small compared to the 2J. So that combo is kind of a ridiculously high compression. 
and it's kind of looking like that's adding up. One sixty. So we did a pull, and uh, it sounded like it was breaking up. So we pulled the plugs out, and um, they were gapped to like thirty something, which I just think is a little bit too much for what we're doing here. So Sam gapped them down to twenty. So hopefully that that fixes that problem. <laughs> What? I think the first two would have gone to that if you kept going. That's wild. Almost 200. Sorry, cylinder three. I'm not gonna tell Kelly. He doesn't watch my videos, so he'll never see this. His cylinder three is weak. How do we turn out the boost to cylinder three and not the other ones? All right, last one. And cylinder six. It's kind of expected. Yep. All right, we'll put the plugs back in and see how it goes. All right guys, little update. We got the car on the dyno. We figured out that the cam timing wasn't perfect. So after we fixed that up, the car's making, uh, doing a lot better. It's only making 350, but it's a really, really low boost. Got the headlight brackets figured out. Look at that. Got to get the grill mounted in there. Right, right about there. And then uh, tomorrow I've got a drift school going on um, out at UMC. And so we're gonna take this car and shake it down on the paddock while we're doing the school, make sure that it's all, all good. Other than that, we got to mount out the body kit. I'm just going to put some uh, stickers on it and give it a little bit of spice. And then we've got Monday, uh, it's kind of our last day to get stuff figured out. Uh, Jesse spent all day mounting tires. We got to load up the trailer, get some extra spares and stuff like that. Put all the wheels and tires in there, get fuel, and then should be good to go. But as far as the dyno, I think we're done with that. We got it up to one bar of boost. It was making 350, 360, I think. And uh, we ran out of fuel. Used a whole tank of fuel on the dyno. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we got to run up to Ogden. Luckily, there's one station in Utah that sells E85. So we're going to run up there, grab some fuel for tomorrow, and then be good to go. But Kelly, instead of helping me today, Spent all day smoking meats. Zuckerberg. Yeah, dude, my cigarettes are no good. I tried to put beef in them. What is that? That is brisket. This is cooked for four and a half hours on 98 degrees with my eyeball. 33.6. That's not good. Stop. I got to go to the doctor. Oh, I probably ruined this, actually. Uh, one other thing that I'm super excited about. I put these 2012 seats in my 2008 in the center console and stuff. It is uh, way more comfortable than my blown out uh, 
King Ranch stuff that I had. So this should make the trip a lot more comfortable. Unfortunately, none of the electrical is hooked up. So the seat is kind of up and back. So it's really awkward to drive. And uh, all of us are different heights. So I don't know how it's going to work out. But hopefully this, uh, hopefully this thing is old reliable for us on this trip. All right, we're bringing the uh, Kelly's car out to the racetrack today. Uh, I've got some private instruction going on. So in between uh, instructing and whatnot, we're gonna shake down that car and see how it does on the track. We'll shake it down and see how it does. I still wanna check out how the front, front steering is. Um, I changed from zero Ackerman to the six Ackerman washers. So I feel like that'll give it a little, bit, a little bit better feel since last time I drove it. I also changed the camera and stuff at the same time. So I haven't driven it since I did all that. I did not like the way it drove last time, but then we were having engine problems and the suspension didn't feel right, but I couldn't really shake it all down because we were dealing with multiple issues. So hopefully today um, gives us some good data on the testing. Obviously, if, 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 if I'm going to be drifting on a mountain road, I want this car to be comfortable to drive and not at all like having to adapt to a sketchy setup. So this is really the last opportunity we have to shake down the car in that aspect. So I'm um, driving the truck out with the trailer pretty pretty fully loaded and uh it's a little taxing for the truck i was going 60 65 i didn't want to push it there's a little bit of sway going on with the trailer and uh and the truck has kind of high egt's trying to pull like that so uh just a little a little little taste of what we got looking forward to on our 24-hour drive but we're here at the beautiful umc facility so uh we're gonna get set up and shake this car down Hey guys, welcome back. Here's what we got going on this week. We are prepping to go to uh, Drift Appalachia, which is the uh, Toge event. This time it's in Kentucky. It's been in West Virginia. This is the third round. I don't, I don't know where the other one is, but after watching the videos, I felt some serious uh, FOMO and I want to go do this. I haven't done a lot of fun stuff this year. And uh, this is going to be my fun thing. It's a lot of work. Uh, I've been trying to get multiple cars ready to take different cars for different stuff this year. And I keep running into problems and it's super demotivating. And so actually on this trip, I had paid for the event. I was all ready to go. And then uh, I had a failure on my pro car. And I talked to Kelly because Kelly was, was down to go on the trip. And he's like, you know what? We're not going to not go, so take my car, he said. Kelly said, take my car. And I said, thanks, Kelly. That's awesome. That's actually a car that uh, I put together in 2018 or 2019 and uh, drove it quite a bit. Had a lot of fun with it. We did the, the video shoot, the Super Tuner video shoot with that car. Um, I did a lot of Team Tandem stuff with Jerry and Stucky. And then I sold it, and it got passed around a little bit. Where is it? It's uh, that car, the car from that, that picture, that video. Um, that was Jerry's car from that era. I got a drawing of that car. Cool stuff. That car's got a lot of nostalgia, a lot of history. And Kelly ended up buying it back from a guy in Iowa. And he's letting me use it. So I'm stoked because I got a lot of history with that car. It needed some work. Um, it got neglected before Kelly got a hold of it. So... I've been putting a lot of time and effort in this car, actually almost a week and a half's worth of work, uh, getting this thing back to what I feel like it should be. And hopefully that's good for Kelly because Kelly bought it, went to go drive it, problems. And then he tried to fix a couple of things on it and then another problem. And he has never had a good lap in this car until yesterday. Uh, we took it out to the track, shook it down after being on the dyno and it seems to be working. There was some rubbing in the front and stuff and it's had some improvements since I got it. So the basics is a 350Z rear diff and axles, CD09, 
uh, triple disc, tilt and clutch, wise fab, which it didn't have when I got it. Those are not wheels that are going on it. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, Z32 brakes, inline hydro, uh, bash bars front and rear, racing seat, just the basic. I put some bricks on it. These are my bricks. Sorry, Kelly, you can't keep those. I wanted this car to look good for this event. It's got uh, the cage, the style that I like. I like really bright um, gusset plates in the front so you can see them through the windshield. And just to spice it up a little bit, we're trying to put some vinyl on it. Not my favorite thing, but I've got to do something to spice it up. And there's a bunch of like little spots of paint missing because it was wrapped when I sold it. When it was de-wrapped, unwrapped, it pulled some paint off in certain areas. So instead of repainting the whole car, I'm just trying to spice it up with a little bit of vinyl to cover some of that stuff. So we're going to Appalachia Drift. We are leaving tomorrow. So we've got a 24 hour drive to get there. I've been prepping my truck. Um, if you guys watched my last video, no, I didn't show it. I haven't showed it yet. Got myself a new trailer. This is a toy hauler that I converted to fit a car. And by converted, I mean we just cut out the stove. That's all it was. So let me show you this. I've been doing a bunch of work on it today. That is the bed for sleeping in the rear, which is now converted to tire storage. So we have tires above the car in the rear. We've got, let's see, there's still room for more tires up here, but I'll show you. We've got two, four, six, eight right there. We can at least fit another eight or 10 up there. In the front where the bed is, we've got three rows of eight. So eight, 16, uh, 24, 25, 26, 27. I think we have 27 tires up there uh, on that bed, which is good because that puts a lot of tongue weight on the trailer because the car sits really far back in here. You can see this is our, this is our main hurdle, right? The bumper is going to come and hit here. Obviously, this is the axle. So a lot of the weight of the car sits behind the axle. And we literally have like an inch or two in the front and an inch or two in the rear, if that, when this car is loaded up. But the nice thing about this, when we get to the track and the car's out, we have a fridge, we have a microwave, we have a bathroom, we have a sink, we have air conditioning, we have a generator, and we have somewhere to sleep. So this will be awesome at the track um, with uh, comfort, right? Uh, we got a spot for oil, we got a spot for tools and parts. We've got a place to sit down or sleep. These fold down after the car goes out. Like I said, we've got a microwave. Look at that. And um, overall, I mean, it's not a huge trailer. It's 34 feet, but it holds the car. And it should be comfortable for us, which is the idea. I want to get to the track and have some comfort. We got our toolbox strapped in here. We got some extra parts. We're going to carry some fuel. So we're going to be pushing the limits on being overloaded. But um, this is a way to have an enclosed trailer, have all the benefits of an enclosed trailer with, uh, with a camper as well. It's a little bit older. It's not in beautiful shape, but it's definitely not in terrible shape. The, I mean, obviously the water works, the air conditioning works, the generator works. And so it's got the, the, the basic necessities for comfort necessities, right? Comfort necessities. Also my truck, we've been doing some work on that. So that should be reliable to get us across country and back. But really this is just, uh, it's gonna be a fun trip. It's been a while since we've traveled and had some fun. We got the band back together. I haven't been on a trip with Kelly since Drift Week probably two years ago. Same with Jesse. And uh, we've just been putting our heads down and working and I want to go have some fun. So this is going to be our fun. But you know, fun for me sometimes includes torture and a broken truck and all that stuff. But let me tell you about this. I said I would tell you about the wheels. The reason we have these yellow wheels is that they are skinny wheels. And with the Wise Fab, the car is so wide, it won't fit between the axles to go in the trailer forward. So we loaded it in backwards tried to put a bunch of tongue weight and still the trailer was swaying the other day and it was not good. It was scaring me and I, I'm, I'm the king of doing sketchy stuff. So we put the narrow wheels on so we can go in forward. As soon as we get to the track, we'll pull the car out, put the other wheels back on, which makes it four inches wider overall. And so that's the reason for the yellow wheels, but they do match the cage. So maybe I should run them. So I found this wing for the car. Uh, I think I got it from Brody. I have no idea what wing it is, but it fits perfect on a coupe. It's like it's made for it. And I decided to use some of the spray paint from the pro car. Uh, it's not gonna match perfect, but it's better than the alternative, which was to leave it black. So I'll unwrap this in a second and see how well it uh, comes together, how it looks. Okay, so I put this new interior in my 08 truck. This is a 2012 interior. I actually bought the whole cab for that truck. 
and I'm going to swap it eventually, but I knew I wasn't going to swap it yet, but I wanted to enjoy the comfy seats instead of my old blown out, uh, King Ranch, which was really hard, crunchy leather, uncomfortable. And it's got this giant, uh, armrest with cup holders that go all the way forward. It's just a little bit different. Well, <clears throat> it's way different. Super cool. Seats are comfy. But what I didn't do before we parted out that truck, I did not adjust the seat. So this seat is stuck in the last position that it was in before we took it out. And I never bothered to adjust it or check it or anything. So I drove this truck the other day, um, like on a two hour trip and it was super uncomfortable. I couldn't like pivot my foot to reach the gas pedal properly. It just really sucked. And I was like, we're leaving on this trip. How am I going to adjust this seat? So what I did is I knew, um, my friend Brody has a 2012 truck. And so I was like, Hey Brody, would you mind stopping by my shop so I can swap my seat into your truck, adjust it and then swap it back. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to spend the next 30 or 40 minutes swapping seats between trucks, adjust it to hopefully what's good for me, Jesse and Kelly, and then put it back in this truck. So, you know, of all the things we got to do, this one, this one takes priority because it's comfort, comfort on a long drive. Also, I'm going to show you what I got in my toolbox here. A bunch of, par a bunch of fancy parts. We have a spare turbo. Okay. So we got a spare turbo. We have a spare, let me climb up here. We have a spare, um, What's that called? The 12 valve shutoff valve, the P pump shutoff valve. We've got a spare fast pump. So if the fuel pump fails, we're not stranded. I'm trying to make it so anything that fails, we will not be stranded waiting for parts on the side of the road. And to top it off, we have my spare P pump and all the tools needed to swap a P pump, do the timing on the P pump, everything P pump related. I brought this time because we have had that problem before. We got spare filters, spare oil, air compressor, um, 33 millimeter socket for the semi truck wheels. There's the gear puller for the P pump. There is, um, I have the P pump socket in here somewhere. What else? That's the, that's the puller for the, the P pump socket. Yeah. We got the goods in here. Oh, I was looking for that the other day. So we are fully set up. All right, so we we got Brody's seat. These are super nice. These platinums. I wish, I wish I had platinums. But we got we got this seat in here, and we have to make sure it fits all of us. Jesse, me, and Kelly. Kelly's not here, so he's gonna have to rely on our expertise. What do you think? Good. It's stressful because, uh, like, this is a, this is our only chance to to adjust it. Get you get you comfortable there. Get you there. Yep. Yep. It's like the Alabama. Oh, the elbow, elbow deep. Yeah. Is that is that when your truck squatted, or how do you how do you do it when your truck squatted? Uh, you gotta look up over your hood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, down. Oh yeah, I guess you max that height all the way up high. Yeah. So this like this was up and like tilted back, so my legs were like super weird. So we just pushed all the way down, pushed forward a little bit. Approved. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. I just want this truck now. Look at that. It's so nice. Got the platinum leather. All right, we're gonna pull the seat back out. Well, it's frustrating the first time we had it dialed, I turned the key off and it goes, went back. So I'm gonna pull it out with the key out, or at least unplug them, and then uh, put it back in my truck. Yeah, so check this out. This is the this is the plug that goes into the new seats. And uh, this is the plug in my truck. What do we got? Four wires, if that. Two wires. That's all we got is two wires for the seat versus uh, like 400 wires for the other one. So there's a bit of an incompatibility. It's not going to plug in. Not going to plug into that. It is the night we night before. We were going to leave tonight. We're leaving tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. So it's uh, almost midnight. Not going to get much sleep tonight, but we're almost done. Almost ready to go. Um, we're supposed to meet up with Kelly in the morning. Jesse's burning the midnight oil with me getting this all ready. We got still a couple things to do, but... We've been putting uh, body panels and some stickers on the car. I really like that uh, despair stripe. I've got the same one on that purple car. Gives it a nice clean look. Um, it continues onto the skirts. We'll finish that up when we get here, when we get there. Man, I'm tired. Uh, and then we're gonna, once that's all kind of complete and the car's out of the trailer in the sunlight, we'll place some more stars around with all the body kit on and see how that fits. And um, I think everything mechanically is good on this. The one thing that's lacking right now is 
uh, firewall. We have to put a firewall back there. So I got some measurements. I'm just cutting some plate right now. And uh, I don't know if we'll install it tonight or just take it with us and install it when we get there. But it's definitely gonna be easier to cut it with the tools in the shop. So a couple of 18 inch plates, we'll overlap them and just screw them in there. And that's gonna be safe enough to be a firewall.